When I was in college, I did physics, maths, English, and computer science. I got two Ds and two Us. It didn't go well. I thought I wasn't academic. I managed to get in through clearing to a university to do a construction finance degree. At the end of it, I got a first class degree with honours. I then spent six months in construction and pivoted into tech. And I was sprint ready in three months in a tech stack that I'd never worked in before and I had no prior projects. So in this video, I'm going to show you how the Ali Abdul method got me a first class degree and put me on the path to becoming pretty adept at learning. The strategy I then applied to become sprint ready in three months. And then the three things that you need to do that will get you noticed as being knowledgeable. So how do you get good at learning? Well, after my failure at college, I realized that this was my last chance to get my act together. Going to university was going to cost a lot of money and I wouldn't have a second shot at it. So I think I literally went online and typed in how to get a first class degree at university and this would have come up. Now it wasn't this specific video, it was an old one but I think he's deleted where he shared that he had all of these strategies for learning that he implied. He did the mind maps, he did like all of the classic things that you think of when it comes to learning. He had a friend that was massively outperforming him so he asked his friend, oh what, what's your secret? And the dude had a word document and an app called Anki and in this word document he would literally just write down questions and answers. Now these guys were studying for medicine so it would literally just be a collection of okay he's learned about say Mary Curie and he would write the questions that would answer all the things that he needs to remember about them. So when did she die and then he would write the answer and he would keep writing these questions and answers until he had finished whatever textbook section that he was on and it covered everything. And then he would copy and paste these into an app called Anki and this is what the GUI looked like. So You'd simply get a question and you'd think, okay, what's the answer? And then down here, there'd be a show button. You click show and it would show you the answer. And based on whether you could remember what the answer was, you'd click, you'd either click again, good or easy. So if you're struggling, it will show you more frequently. You can see there one minute, right? So it's going to show you again in a, in a minute. But if you found it easy, it's not going to show you that card for another four days. So essentially what it does is it, it asks you the questions that you need asking more often, more often. And the ones that you have learned quickly it doesn't show you for a few days now really this only takes about five minutes a day because the cards become so spread out there's some that are in my database that it only shows me once a year because i just know them like the basics of coding like stuff that i day-to-day -day still have in the bank just in case because you know you never know what you'll forget and I don't have to manage it anymore. It's managed by the software for me. Now, I'm not too sure I agreed really with having a bunch of Word documents with all of your notes because it's not a very smart way of organizing what you've learned. So I actually use Obsidian, which links your notes together in, and this graph shows it quite nicely, right? So this person has a books note and he's linked it to some authors. And so he can literally see the connections between what he's learned. And it's just an overall really powerful note taking app that I use. But I'm not going to go into too many details just so that I can give you the overall framework of what I do. So you've got Obsidian for taking notes and you've got Anki for remembering what you've noted forever. How do you apply that to something like software engineering? Well, first I would get an in-depth book on your tech stack. So I have the I have John Skeet C Sharp in depth and I went through this book and I broke it up into questions and answers. Now a lot of this stuff I already knew. It was solidifying my knowledge and making sure that I was doing things correctly. So for example, I might be taking notes on generics. So I'd write a question that what I'm reading in the textbook answers. I'd write down the answer. And then also I normally give myself something supplementary. If it's not code, then it's normally an image. But in the case of code, I'll put inline code. So if I let this know that it's C-sharp code and we give it some better formatting, then we have our question and answer. And this is how I track what I learn in coding. But you're a software engineer. You're not just here to learn code. You've got to apply it to a business context. So. Another thing is keeping ahead of how your business works. So you should also be using this technique to learn the business knowledge of your company. Because the chances are your colleagues aren't doing this. And this is really going to stand out after a couple of months when you can remember all of the technical terms and knowledge that is specific to that business. Instead of just generically bringing code like every software engineer graduate does. Once you've created these notes, you just copy paste them into Anki and there you go. You've got them memorized forever, but maybe five minutes a day. So your last question might be, okay, well, that's obvious, learn coding and learn and learn the business knowledge. What else should I be learning? What else should I be learning to get ahead? I really want to be that person that everybody knows, knows their stuff. Well, I've actually got three points. First, I think you should learn from the best. You're going to be on a team and people are going to have strengths and weaknesses. Work out what people are good at and learn from them. If you have a colleague who happens to be really good at system architecture and you have a task that's relevant to that, go and learn from them. Say, look, this is what I'm working on. 
I know you're the guy for system architecture. They're going to love that you've noticed. They're more likely to be willing to help from that. In this way, you're making the most off of the mentorship that you can get from your colleagues. It's what's going to set you apart from the people who don't currently have a job. If you don't have a job, you've got YouTube. I consumed so much YouTube content while I was in construction, and that eased my transition because I understood the language. I understood how software engineers communicated because I watched them in my spare time. Right, so the second thing is to find the knowledge gaps in your team. Your team isn't going to cover every single aspect of what the business needs you to be able to do. Find where, find the holes. Maybe somebody recently has left and he was the guy for a specific library or framework. Fill that gap. If you're in a stand-up and there's a feature that's coming up and everybody throws their hands up and says, actually, I haven't really worked on something like that before. I don't know. Jump on that task, take notes, <laughs> remember it. So then in a month time, when you get another feature just like it and everybody still doesn't know what they're doing, you're the guy that goes, oh, I, I did it. I remember what I did. Here's how we're going to do it. And lastly, keep up to date with tech news. Chances are you're probably using GitHub Copilot and that's because that information has got to you. Think of all the tools that are equally useful that you're not aware of just because you're not keeping up to date with the industry. And you don't have to be sat there reading, you know, the tech, the tech section of the Financial Times. Subscribe to some YouTubers that make the news interesting. Like I watch every Fireship video and it's hilarious. It's really good. And when I'm, when I'm at work and people are talking about a new JavaScript framework, I already know about it. And the reason I remember that is because it's funny. If you follow this strategy, you're going to notice that your knowledge for your career has exploded. But that doesn't strictly mean that you're going to be good at problem solving, which is still a massive part of your job. So I made this video here, which talks about my workflow for how I solve problems. It's not language specific, so it should apply to everyone. So if you click this video here, hopefully that helps. Cheers.